there are three stages to relationships between two people. First, the relationship stimulates and reveals your emotional behavioral patterns and in time serves to heal them. This first stage is experienced as attraction and then aversion to a partner. Really, it is your wrestling match with your relationship to yourself, intensified in the mirror of the other. Mostly, you don't experience the other, and if at all, only minimally. The task and the challenge is to see and own and love yourself. Thus, relationship in the first stage is a movement into separation. This separation allows you in time to truly relate to each other interpersonally. You become two to empower and enable you to relate one to the other. But this can happen only after the childhood early life, patterns of merging and distancing, need and withdrawal, betrayal and punishment have been just transcended. The second stage is the heart stage, the practices of love and caring, you enter a period of deep compassion. And the key to this stage is that the invitation to love takes precedence over being loved. Your need is fulfilled in the giving. And the focus is overridingly on the beloved who you have the opportunity to love. Thus you have moved from need and desire to love and compassion also from object to subject and in time even that dissolves as you experience yourself and the other as the same in heart awareness. The interplay of personalities which is both celebrated and transcended in this stage primes and pre pre prepares you for the third stage of relationship and the most exalted condition of interpersonal relationship. The third stage is the spiritual sacred state. Here, you enter into the life of wisdom and devotion as companions together on the higher spiritual path. No longer the focus of each other's neuroses, and the path through the healing of the opposites in you and with the long and exhilarating test of heart challenge, awareness and compassion behind you, you enter into spiritual devotional awareness practice in earnest, seriously, sincerely. This may appropriately occur in senior years. But in rare cases, it may occur earlier in life. There is usually a foresight with signs of this destiny. And this may be helpful for you in your inward preparations. At each of these stages, naturally, there is the choice or opportunity to break or to go onward. There is no law that says sustaining the relationship is better than the alternative. But through the renewal of inner commitment and inner vows, the relationship is refreshed and replenished. When the break is chosen or given, it should be done as thoroughly and maturely as possible, leaving behind as little emotional, energetic, and karmic residue as possible. 
Relationships then require a radical overhaul of understanding and purpose. The present world culture, which is increasingly westernized, material, greed-based and ignorant, must give way to the sacred culture of spirituality and transcendence. Interpersonal relationships occupy a central place that far transcends desire, sensuality, the childhood needs for grounding, nourishment, the prevailing idea of partner as possession, of reflected self-value and the appearance of power, wealth, the ability and competence of our partner, jealousy, possessiveness, the sexualizing of virtually everything over the last 100 years for commercial, political and manipulative purposes. The primary and age-old motivation of humans to know themselves meets its fulfillment and its greatest test and obstacle in relationship. We don't know ourselves. We don't know the other. We are not aware of the world about us and we do not experience reality. Humanity in these dark times is essentially ignorant, unaware and unconscious. Relationships alongside inner work, therapy and meditation is the most powerful tool for awakening there is. Become aware of your conditioning. Become aware of your rebel conformist tendencies. Become aware of how you have conformed to the myth of romance and falling in love and society's expectations. In reality, you are neither male nor female, neither young or old, neither abundant or needy, neither loyal nor betrayed. You are neither good nor evil, child or adult, foolish or wise. In your true nature, you are utterly free. Think less of relationships and more of relating authentically and freely from your true nature with everything and everyone. Profoundly and truly see everyone and everything, not only in their many varied appearances, but as adaptations of the divine. Everything you meet is the divine in human form. Everything you see is the divine in different guises. Breathe, move, feel and taste the world as it really is. Shot through with the divine essence, the scent of reality, absorbed into the material arising world of forms. Relating like this, through your awareness of the vital breath, to the witnessing of the all-absorbing world of the reflected absolute, to your spiritual practice of being with all others as manifestations of the divine is your constant, unwavering alignment with freedom. And this freedom is love. <laughs>